Good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to talk about our research on symbolic knowledge, digits, and beyond. My talk today focuses on the idea of orthography. An orthography is a set of conventions for writing a language, includes norms for a variety of different features. More generally, I like to think of orthography as defining the set of symbols used in writing a language and the rules for using those symbols. Mathematical orthography is all around us. Here I'm showing you pictures of a mug that I bought when I was at Bletchley Park the last time I was in the UK. This mug shows mathematical signs and symbols that are meaningful if you understand them, if you have the knowledge to use them. We define mathematical orthography, therefore, as a set of conventions for how symbols are used to convey mathematical meaning. The question I want to address today is, what is the role of mathematical orthography in children's numeracy development? There are many similarities between mathematical orthography and orthographies in other written languages. For example, we assume that orthography is learned through exposure as well as direct instruction. We also know that the order and spacing of elements is important. So for example, in words, if I move the order of the letters around, I get two different meanings. Similarly, if I move the order of symbols around in a mathematical expression, then I'll have two different meanings. There are also differences across orthographies. For example, in mathematical orthography, spatial positioning is a very important indicator of meaning. And single elements often represent concepts, so for example, the plus sign or the equal sign. In contrast, in written alphabetic orthographies, single elements usually represent sounds, although of course there are written orthographies where single units represent meanings as well. So overall, this tells us that orthography is language specific. In studying English orthography, researchers have used lexical decision tasks and spelling judgment tasks to assess people's knowledge of orthographic information. In particular, consider the letter string D-A-W-G. Although that sounds like a word when you sound it out, it's not a familiar English word. And so we use that insight to develop a measure of orthographic processing in mathematics. The simple decision task for math was developed by Gail Headley as part of the research she did for her PhD. Gail had the insight that a similar task to a lexical decision or a spelling judgment task would also be useful in studying mathematical orthography. So she showed participants a symbol string and asked them to decide whether or not it was meaningful or conventional. These are examples of conventional and non-conventional strings that are used in SDT math. <clears throat> On the left, we see a conventional sequence that could occur in a math context, and on the right we see a non-conventional combination of the same symbols. In two studies, we've shown evidence for a relationship between math orthography and performance on math tasks. So for example, in Gail's thesis, she showed that for grade 8 students, there was a correlation between a curriculum-based algebra assessment and their SDT math performance. For young adults, in a paper we published in the Journal of Numerical Cognition, we showed again relationships between arithmetic and word problem solving and SDT math performance. In this project, we wanted to extend those findings to younger children. And so Heather Douglas, shown here, developed a version of the simple de decision task for math that was suitable for elementary school students. In the elementary SDT math, Children were again shown sequences of conventional symbols and asked to judge, is this something that you would see? Would your teacher write this on the board? Is this the cor a correct combination? And those were contrasted with non-conventional sequences. So the task was the same as it was for the adults. They saw a symbol string and had to decide whether it was conventional or not. Children were told explicitly that the arithmetic they would see if they saw arithmetic would be correct and they should focus on the symbols and the combination of those symbols. We use the SDT math in a large project which we call the Language Learning and Math Achievement Study. 
This study involves cohorts of children from Montreal, Ottawa, Winnipeg in Canada, and also Northern Ireland, and involves a range of collaborators. Children in the LAMA study were shown the elementary version of the SDT math on an iPad. So this shows a screenshot of one stimulus. If they thought that the stimulus was conventional, they were supposed to touch the green check mark. If they felt that it was not conventional, they were to touch the red X. Children were asked to do the task quickly but accurately. Overall, we found that scores were higher on conventional than on non-conventional items, and that there was some evidence that at least some of the time children were guessing. So we calculated a measure of D prime, which as I'm sure you know, is the difference between the standardized proportion of hits, that is correctly accepting conventional items, minus the standardized proportion of false alarms, which is incorrectly calling a non-conventional item conventional. The D prime measure, therefore, if it's around zero, suggests that the children are guessing. In the rest of this talk, I'm gonna address three research questions. First of all, is the measure of math orthography reliable? Secondly, is it valid? And third, is it a useful measure for understanding individual differences in children's math development? I'll talk about two subsets of data. In one set, 147 children participated in grades two and three. 88 of these children were learning math and French, 59 were learning math and English. They completed the ESDT math in both grades, and they also completed measures of word reading, math performance, and cognitive measures all in English. The children also completed measures in French, but I'm not gonna talk about them today. The other set of data that I'll talk about briefly included children in grades four and six. All of these children were learning math and English, and for the majority of them, their first language was also English. They completed the ESDT math twice, about four months apart. So my first question is, is this measure reliable? In terms of internal consistency, we see moderate levels of reliability across the different samples. In terms of within-person consistency, there again are moderate levels of correlation between children's performance, for example, from grades two to grade three, and within grade four, about four months apart. The highest level of within-person consistency occurs in grade six, which is probably not surprising because we were expecting that children would still be learning these symbols over the elementary grades. We address the validity of the ESDT math in three ways. First of all, we asked, does it improve with age? Secondly, we asked whether it correlates with other measures of orthographic knowledge, which in this case is word reading. And third, we asked, does it correlate and or predict measures of math performance beyond their shared relationships with other cognitive measures and with symbolic quantitative knowledge? Does math orthography performance improve with age? The answer is yes. As shown on the left, the D prime score increases significantly from grade two to grade three. And as shown on the right, it increases significantly between grade four and grade six. These graphs show the correlations between word reading on the X axis and math orthography D prime score on the Y axis. As you can see in both grades two and grade three, there is a moderate relationship that's statistically significant between the two variables. I'd also like to point out though, that there are a number of children, especially in grade two, whose performance is essentially guessing. So there's still a lot of room for change and improvement on this measure at this age level. Next, we looked at the relations between other math measures and the measure of math orthography. I'm gonna talk about four outcomes, word problem solving, addition fluency, number transcoding, and a measure of algebra or really pre-algebra knowledge. As shown here in both grade two and grade three, math orthography D prime score was correlated with performance on the math problem solving measure. It was also correlated with performance on all the other math measures as well. I'm not gonna show you all those correlations, but as many of us have found in multiple studies, there are a lot of interrelationships among math measures. Therefore, in order to try and understand whether math orthography contributes uniquely 
to individual differences in children's math performance, we used hierarchical multiple regression. First of all, we accounted for cognitive correlates, attentional, relational, and linguistic, that we ex were expecting would predict mathematical form performance. Secondly, we included two quantitative symbolic measures, number comparison, which assesses children's cardinal knowledge, and number order judgments, which assess their symbolic ordinal knowledge. And then finally, we included the measure of math orthography. More formally, we used hierarchical multiple regression to test the model that I just described. I'm going to show you a series of tables that look just like this one, so I'll work through this first one a little bit slowly. This shows children's performance on the outcome measure, in this case math word problem solving in grade two, and it shows the steps of the hierarchical regression. In the first step, we included the cognitive control measures, which account for almost 36% of variability in math word problem solving. In the second step, we added the quantitative symbolic measures, which account for additional unique variants. And in the third step, the one we're most interested in, we see that math orthography accounts for an additional 6.3% of the variance in math word problem solving. On this slide, I've added two additional outcome measures in grade two, arithmetic fluency and a written transcoding measure. You can see that in contrast to math word problem solving in grade two, math orthography does not account for additional unique variance in these two outcomes. Now let's look at the results for grade three. Here, the cognitive control measures are the same ones. They were measured in grade two, but I'm using the quantitative symbolic measures and math orthography measures from grade three. In the first row of the table, you see that math word problem solving is predicted by all three of the steps. And importantly for us, math orthography accounts for significant unique variance. The same pattern is shown for all of the outcomes, addition fluency, written transcoding, the algebra measure, and word reading at the bottom. In all cases, there's about somewhere between two and 4% of the variance that's unique to math orthography. The findings for word reading are particularly interesting because it tells us that a lot of the symbol processing that's going on is probably common to what happens when children are processing words. In this slide, I'm showing the most stringent analysis. We're looking at performance in grade three after first accounting for performance in grade two. So we can think about this as the predictors of change or growth in performance from grade two to grade three. For math word problem solving and for addition fluency, math orthography accounts for significant unique variance in growth. For transcoding, it does not, and also for word, word reading, it does not. So these results suggest that math orthography not only has a general relationship with word reading, but also has a very specific relationship with measures of math performance where the skills involved in math orthography are supporting growth in other math measures. So in this slide, I'm attempting to put all the pieces together. In other research, we've argued for a hierarchical symbol integration model in which cardinal, ordinal, ordinal and arithmetic symbol knowledge are nested together. In many studies with children from about grade two onwards, Research shows that the relationship between cardinal knowledge and arithmetic knowledge, for example, is mediated by ordinal knowledge. The results that we've presented today on orthographic knowledge suggest a little bit of a different model, and we've tried to capture that here in this dotted triangle um, overlaying cardinal, ordinal, and arithmetic knowledge. Children initially are not too concerned. They don't really need to know many symbols other than digits, but as their symbol digit knowledge becomes more developed and more integrated, they're adding orthographic knowledge in their operation signs, equal signs, and so on. In summary, I hope I've convinced you that math orthography as measured by the SDT math is a reliable measure. 
and valid. Valid in the sense that it's related to word reading, which also assesses orthographic knowledge, and showing that it's correlated with math measures, improves with children's development, and predicts growth in problem solving and arithmetic. So in conclusion, we propose that math orthography is a distinct aspect of math skill, the measures knowledge of symbols and the conventions for combining them, and is related to other measures as well. It fits into a model of symbol knowledge that involves the integration of digits and other symbols in an associative network. The funding for this project was provided by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, and I'd like to thank the collaborators, the graduate students, the research assistants, the children, teachers, and parents who have been involved in the LAMA project. And thanks to you for listening to me today.